Hello and welcome to Applause Performances. Idea Stream Arts is monthly online spotlight for musicians living and creating in Northeast Ohio. I'm Idea Stream's David C. Barnett. Closing time. To say that Christine Jackson is obsessed with the blues is not an understatement. Ever since she picked up the trumpet in fifth grade, Christine has been focused on one thing, making music. And once she discovered her dad's old B.B. King blues albums, she was hooked. A couple decades and a lot of hard work later, Christine got the chance to open for the late King of the Blues here in Northeast Ohio. Now that the pandemic begins to wane, Christine has a new obsession, getting back on stage this summer to perform in front of blues and Americana audiences again. In the meantime, Christine Jackson joins us today from her home studio on Cleveland's west side for applause performances. I pass that lonely street light that never seemed to shine too. While I'm broadcasting live from the KeyBank studio here inside the Idea Center at Playhouse Square, Christine, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. And we welcome everyone who's watching us now live on Facebook, Facebook Live. We'd like to hear from you, and we can do that through the comment section. If you've got your comment section up, let us know what you're, where, where, where are you watching from? We know Christine has some uh, fans uh, down in the Sunshine State, so maybe we'll get some Florida input into our into the proceedings today so let's uh let's take off christine we'll find out a little bit about you we'll, we'll move from the sunshine state to northeast ohio you're from grafton ohio i take it yeah i grew up in Elyria and grafton absolutely and now you got your musical start in the fifth grade but it wasn't a guitar you picked up it was a trumpet <laughs> and i understand that your parents uh, sort of mandated that you had a very special practice room tell us about that <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I started on the trumpet because we happened to have one in the family, so it was uh, it was easy to attain, and I wasn't very good, obviously, and it wasn't so much my parents, but my siblings, you know, they were like, you're horrible, so <laughs> they, <laughs> they sent me outside and, and said, you know, practice in that car, you know, the car sitting in the backyard, so that, with, that with was the, my with practice. With the windows rolled up? With the windows up, Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I can't tell you how many hours I spent practicing in that car. Yeah. But eventually uh, you, you, you turned yourself on or you found <laughs> out about a, 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 a very special form of music through your dad's vinyl collection. You were turned on to the music of Riley Blues Boy King, B.B. King. Tell us about him and, and his influence on you. Absolutely. So, you know, after several years of, uh, you know, car practice, you know, I, I kind of acquired the uh, ability to hear music and just kind of play it uh, by ear. And then I would go to the attic and uh, spin my dad's vinyl. And one of the records was B.B. King's Completely Well. And uh, the horn section on there just blew my mind. And uh, again, hours and hours playing my, my trumpet along with that record. And, and what, what, going back to your trumpet for a second, you you did I you were saying the other day that you did some concerts or you played for some people from <laughs> the car or something like that or how did that well go? yeah you know I graduated from in the car to outside of the car and Great. you know and the neighbors the neighbors would come out to listen so yeah well, let's let's hear how you've developed into uh, into your uh, musical uh, uh, fantasticness uh, let's hear a little something what are you going to play for us tell us a little story sure. about it if you can. So this is, uh, I'm going to play Rolls Like Thunder, and it's it's kind of a combination of, you know, uh, some rocky kind of blues vibes. Um, I'm a big fan of Joe Bonamassa, so I, I kind of had him in my mind as I wrote this. Um, it's just a little rock and blues tune, so this is called Rolls Like Thunder. Let's take a listen. And I just disconnected my headphones real quick. <laughs> Welcome to my house, everybody, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. It rolls like thunder, oh, like 
like a damn freight train. My love for you, baby, is steady on like rain. Shout it from the mountain to the valley below. There ain't nothing in this world I wanna do for you, baby. To have you right here, oh now now, next to me. So darling, hold on tight, here we go again No one has ever done what we can I wouldn't change it, even if I could Because it rolls like thunder Ooh, like a damn freight train It rolls like thunder like a damn freight train My love for you, baby Is steady on like rain Steady on like rain My love for you, baby Steady on like rain Got me rolling like a freight train So sweet. That's Christine Jackson with her song Rolls Like Thunder for applause performances. We spotlight a different Northeast Ohio musician every month here on our Facebook page. It's the second Friday of each month, live at noon. And be sure to stick around as Christine debuts her new song, Don't Let Me Go, at the end of the show. We'll keep teasing that as we go on today. And for updates on everything we do here on this program, Applause Performances, you can find out by following us on Facebook and Twitter, Idea Stream Arts, or if you follow us on Instagram, you can go to Idea Stream Neo. Meanwhile, send us a note in the comments section. If you like what you're hearing, let us know that. Let us know where you're uh, watching us from. We've got uh, Christine, a couple folks, uh, a guy, uh, 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 say, hey, sis, all the way from sunny North Carolina, Amanda is uh, sending you a note. Judy Slivka, I miss hearing the blues. Thank you for being here. I'm in old Brooklyn. And Tina says, hey, Christine, watching from work (laughs) while I clear out my office. Thanks for bringing me some sunshine to keep away the blues. I think we're all trying to keep away the blues these days. And uh, this is a good way to do it. Christine, I kind of buried the lead a little bit there. We were talking about the influence of B.B. King, but you actually got to meet him. Talk about that. I got to meet him, but um, and then later on, I got to actually open for him uh, two times during my uh, career. But so you know, rewind. I'm in high school. Uh, the very first concert I ever go to is BB King. My dad gets me tickets, and uh, we're at the Playhouse downtown, right? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, Playhouse Square. Mm-hmm. And again, just falling in love with the whole vibe of live music, and just blown away with the horn section. I'm loving it. I said, you know, eventually I, I need to be up there someday, you know. Fast forward a few years, he's back in town. I'm a little older. I know um, some of the local blues artists, uh, including Robert Lockwood Jr. at this mm-hmm. time. Um, I used to hang out at Fat Fish Blue uh, downtown on uh, <clears throat> Wednesday nights. That's when he would play there with his all-star band. And um, so they'd let me sit in with him. Um, well, before I was sat in with him, I was allowed to sit in with just the band as they played while he took a break. And then after you know that for a while, um, I was getting ready to leave the stage because he was going to come onto the stage. And that was the first time he called me back. And he said, where are you going? He said, you need to stay up here and play, play with me. Nice. So yeah, from then on, I got to you know 
if I if I showed up, I could I could jam whatever. So that was that felt really good to me. So fast forward, BB King's in town. So me and Austin Walk and Kane, um, Michael Bay, we all go to the show, and we go backstage afterwards because you know you get a chance to to, to maybe meet him, right? Mm-hmm. If you're lucky. So we're in line and get really close, and I just start shaking and I'm kind of crying <laughs> a little Aww. bit. And by the time we walk in, I'm I'm just full blown cl- crying. I can't believe I'm about to meet BB B. King. Sure. And you know Austin's laughing, Michael Bay's laughing, and and there you go, Robert Lockwood Jr. sitting right there, and he said, "How's come you never cry for me?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget that. But BB gave me a hug, and he said, "It's okay, sweetheart." You know. And I was like, this, I mean, is pinch me, right? You oh, know? my God. You, you'll never yeah. forget that. Holy cow. Never cat. forget that. That's yeah. everything that you'd ever want, probably. <laughs> yeah. We, and you, then, so we're talking, about your, we're talking about your high school days. You, you were at Midview High School in Grafton. Yeah. Then somewhere along the line, you got up the nerve to travel outside the city and head up to a, <laughs> a place in Westlake, the old Savannah Bar and Grill. And, That's right. And uh, you and a friend tried to go there one night. Tell us the story behind that. What happened there? Well, I, I think my senior year, you know, everybody's trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I had been accepted to the University of Akron for uh, trumpet performance. Um, so my head was already wrapped around music. And I, I had the, you know, I still wanted to find this thing called live music. I really had never experienced it. Um, and my high school band director, Mr. Uh, Clarence Barber, he actually took me to my first live gig, and that was in Lorraine County um, at Mutton Jeff's, and I saw a live band there. And I said, I need to find more of this. So my friend and I got the Scene Magazine, and we found a jam night, and it's a place called the Savannah. So it's a Thursday, we head out, we, f- we find it, and there's a line to go in, and um, we're kind of waiting our turn. But then we get to, to the door, and they wouldn't let us in because we were you know, underage. Ugh. But but I had saw another young person walk in and, and I said to the doorman, I said, well, they got in, you know, and he said, well, he works here. And I said, well, I know I want a job. <laughs> I want to work here. And the next day I started, um, the doorman happened to be the owner, Jim DePaul, that night. So the owner took a chance on me and, you know, I ended up working and uh, working as a hostess for a minute, but I was terrible at that. So they put me in the back and I would, you know, cook the chicken wings and, uh, you know, and then on occasion come out in my apron with my trumpet and get to sit in with the bands. No way. So you, yeah. you happen to have your trumpet on, on hand and then what, was that planned out or did it just happen well, one day? Or? Yeah, I mean, he was well aware of the fact that, you know, I was uh, an aspiring musician. So I always had my trumpet like with me. So when I would get the chance to take a break or, you know, as I got to know the musicians and the bands, um, they'd let me jump out and, and sit in. Yeah. Well, and then after that, you you know you, you had you been at the you sitting in at the Savannah a few times, and then you start sitting in at the Parkview nightclub in Gordon Square, another classic place that we all loved. And Absolutely. Then yep, yep. then you start playing lead and forming your old band. How did how did that happen? Yeah. Again, you know, there was a core of us that always kind of hung out and different musicians that played different instruments and. Uh, you know, the owner of the Parkview, Norm Polanski, one mm-hmm. night said, you know, well, when, when am I going to hire your band? And I said, well, give me a date. And I didn't have a band, but I said, give me <laughs> a right. date Let and, me one <laughs> and we'll put one together. And then that was the beginning of uh, uh, Blues on Purpose with Mary Bridget Davies uh, as okay. the lead singer. Excellent. And, yeah. And uh, the, 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 the late Rob Williams um, was a saxophone player. So we were the horn section. And then... Yeah, I mean, everything just snowballed from there. Wow. Uh, so how did you, you, how did you move from trumpet to guitar? Um, I think it was, you know, my early 20s. Um, I had been doing a lot of journal writing, and I just kind of had the notion that I wanted the, to turn these journals' writings into songs. And, you know, there's no better way to do it than yourself, you know, because I was the one that it was in my head. So... I, uh, I lived with Austin Walken Kane at the time. Um, we shared a house, and so there were guitars laying around everywhere. So I would grab a guitar, and that's when I started teaching myself guitar, and, and singing kind of came at the same time. I, I never sang before that either. 
Alex wrote in and asked, what, what are you playing? What, what's the guitar you're playing right there? Hey, Alex, how you doing, my friend? This is the Supro Silverwood. Um, it's a 2019. That's what that is. Uh, with some custom, you know, customization, because I try to make everything my own. Well, let's let's let's, uh, let's hear another one of your own songs. All right, let's, let's do tell it. us uh, what what do you got next? So this next one we're gonna do uh, for certain, and I wrote this song several years ago, um, and it's had some different life, different vibes, um, where I'm at today. Um, but anyway, it was it's inspired by my parents, kind of watching them deal with uh, life and the struggles that they face together. I, I pray every night for you, oh night, I search all my dreams for you, oh for certain, darling for certain, oh for certain, my love, for you, are the only one for me. Yes, you are the only one for me. You are the only one, the only one for me. For certain, darling, for certain. Ooh, for certain, my love. Darling, for certain, ooh, for certain, my love. And now I, I cry every night for you, oh, and I, I search all my dreams for you, ooh, for certain, darling, for certain. For certain, my love, for you, were the only one for me, yes you, were the only one for me, you, were the only one, the only one for me, ooh for certain. Darling, for certain, ooh, for certain, my love. Award-winning singer-songwriter Christine Jackson performing her song, For Certain, live from her home studio for us today on Applause Performances. And for certain, we've got some folks that are listening and watching today and they're really enjoying what you're doing including some of your florida friends we've got uh, donna and jack here in florida wishing you <laughs> were here uh, oh, we've got nice. a former floridian uh david pinianelli calling us from washington dc an old friend of the station and uh then we've got one across the ocean tommy Hagelin, Hagland, annette and i are watching from orebro I hope I got that right, Tommy. Tell me if I didn't. Orebro, Sweden. So uh, oh, nice. we are all over the place today. And I got to tell <laughs> nice. you, we, we do a, a program like this every month, the second Friday of every month. And next month, boy, do we've got a good show for you. It's another great one. Friday, July 9th, a special Tri-C Jazz Fest performance. So stay tuned for details on that towards the end of the show. Christine... Uh, hard, hard to make this transition, but but can we can we talk about a time in your life when you had to confront a, a, a dark secret? T can you tell us that story? Yeah, I mean it, it's part of my history, right? It's part of what made me who I am today. So I'm I'm not a 
I'm not opposed to talking about it, but yes, as a, as a child, a very young child, uh, you know, I went through some abuse. Um, you know, I don't have to get into what or with whom, but uh, it definitely haunted me most of my life. Um, and really that's what pushed me into music. Um, I found so much comfort and just um, release through music at a young age, you know, particularly the blues when I didn't even know it was a genre of music, um, I found myself lost in it, I think for that very reason. You, you, you got up the courage to, to, to confront the abuser when you hit, hit your 20s. How did facing that, how did it indeed help you with, with your, in your life and in your music? Well, I think, you know, you, I lived with it um, for 20 years, and I never really said anything. I just kind of kept it pent up inside, but I, I think by dealing with it face on, it just lifted this weight off my shoulders, and, you know, it allowed me musically to start exploring other emotions through music. Um, up till then, it was pretty much a dark place, you know, where I would, you know, kind of vent my frustrations. Um, so definitely by confronting it head on, um, I was able to, to move past it and find some healing. For anybody out there who might be in an abusive relationship, we encourage you to reach out to places like uh, the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. We're going to share more details on that later on in the show. Christine, we talked a little earlier about meeting B.B. King and what a thrill that was. The thrill was not gone for you for sure. <laughs> uh, another important influence is another music legend, another music legend who you got to meet, Mavis Staples. Tell us about that. Oh, well, once again, just a, a huge part of my, you know, top, <laughs> top list of memories. But uh, the music box here in Cleveland, mm -hmm. this was uh, several years ago. Um, but I got the call that, you know, they needed an opening act for Mavis Staples. So they submitted me to her management and they, you know, they approve it. So I get to go there and, and open for her. And the really cool thing about the music box is behind the stage, you know, the green room is, it's kind of a communal thing. So if I'm back there, the, the other band was back there. And so I got the chance to really, um, hang out with Mavis and wow. she, she was so uh, encouraging and humble and just like just like hanging out like talking to you right now it was really relaxed and uh, and uh, she did get to hear my set so she had you know words of encouragement about that as well before we get into your next song um, we were talking about your guitar earlier let's let's switch it up a little bit I like to do a yeah. little show and tell You've got another guitar. Am I reading this correctly? It's one of your favorite instruments. It's known as a cigar box guitar? <laughs> Absolutely. We call what, it a CBG. What, what is that? Tell us. Show us. So, you know, I, I didn't know much about it until I had one in my hands. Um, but my understanding is, you know, back in the day, the old blues musicians would make homemade instruments out of whatever they could find laying around the yard. Um, whether it was a, you know, the old washboard, you know, uh, raking. Sure. Yeah, the old washboard. Uh, jug jug per, band per, kind of stuff. Jug band kind of stuff, yeah, to um, homemade guitars. And so this one is an actual cigar box. Wow, look at that. And I have some, uh, these are old 1932 Philco radio uh knobs on here <laughs> that is because so they cool. look just because they look cool yeah yeah thanks to my friend chad out there for those but uh so yeah so i was down in florida um as i do most winter times i get down there for quite a bit of time and a lot down there a lot of the venues have multiple acts throughout the day so there was an act that was playing before me and so i got there and i'm and he's tearing down his stuff and he has like I don't know, 10 of these different kind of cigar boxes. And I wasn't sure who the guy was. Um, I come to know him as Steve RV uh, out, of, out of Florida. And he tears down his stuff and now it's my turn. I'm setting up my stuff. And he said, you know, uh, somebody was telling me about you. He's like, I'm gonna stick around and listen to your set. I said, okay, that's great. That's nice of you. So on the break, he comes up to me and he hands me this, this exact guitar. 
And he said, I, I think you need to have one of these. Wow. And, and so Steve RV, um, you know, thank you for this. And this one is made by secondhand smoke guitar builder, um, Rusty Taylor down That's in Georgia. That's a great name. Yeah. So he calls it, I, I think I can show you here, uh, the headstock. There SHS. it is, secondhand yeah. smoke. Great. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it's such a well-built instrument. Um, all of my blues friends who have, have picked it up and played on it, like uh, Austin Walk and Kane or Mike Lenz, they're like, wow, what, what, an, what an amazing instrument for being homemade. It's like so solid. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning uh, as I go. Uh, I've never played one before. Uh, I've been playing it now for about a year, year and a half. Um, I'm actually going down to South Carolina this uh, September to do a cigar box music festival. Wow, the um, whole festival. Yeah, it turns out there's a whole world for cigar box and homemade homemade instruments like this. So um, it has kind of a bow, has a kind of a Bo Diddley look to it too. The score, oh, abs- the absolutely, yeah. And you know, and, and the tradition is you play a slide, you know, a slide with it. Uh, this right. is a glass slide, right there. Very cool. So let, let's take a, let's take a listen. Play let's play something. Sure. I'm going to do a song called Papa Justify. Um, it's actually one of the first songs I wrote, and it's, uh, it's about falling in love with the blues. Mm. So when I first started playing this cigar box, I'm like, you know, I think this would be a good instrument to, to work out an arrangement for. First love didn't even have a name. Some say it's foolish to carry on in such a way. But my first love has got me holding on in a selfish way. of June, nor the first of May, when I first heard those sweet sounds that stole my soul away, they stole my soul away, but my first love has got me holding on in a selfish way. Justifies howling, speaking through the tubes, speaking his mind by there, down on the blues, preaching to the people now. There's something y'all just ain't doing right. When you sleep all day and play that devil's music all night.
just sliding her way out of that one. That's so fantastic. Well, I'm playing well, the you. Papa Justify, a song about loving the blues, falling in love with the blues on her cigar box guitar, no less. Does that have th three strings on it? Am I saying that? It, it does. And, you know, the old saying about blues music is three chords in the truth. So yeah. three, three strings in the truth. That's right there. amazing. And don't go away, folks, because uh, Christine is about to debut a brand new song in just yeah. a few minutes and we're getting some uh, love from uh, beyond uh, our our borders here uh let's see we've got somebody watching from grafton just love kj we've got uh william is saying loved you at the canton blues fest thanks for treating us to your music today and Alyssa says love it, loving hearing you out here on in the south bay is that saying california ca looks like it yeah. Alyssa, where you, wherever like you're it. writing us from, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Christine, let's let's head back down to Florida. In recent years, you found a, sort of a home away from home in yeah. the Tampa St. Pete area, and you kind of fell into the, this local scene called Trop Rock. What is that? I you're did. wasting away in Margaritaville, or what's that about? I mean, that's where it originated, right? It was yep. the, uh, the the Jimmy Buffett uh, parrot heads. But it's really such a broader sense than that. It's it's we call it escapism. So any kind of music that's you know talks about escaping, you know, whether it's just out on a boat or the open road, um, and the, the the music lovers down there just really embraced um, myself and my music and the whole vibe. Um, it also helps that I had a boat here on Lake Erie for the last four years, so I wrote a lot of uh, you know happy music. <laughs> escapism kind of music based on that and so as I took that down to Florida it, it was just like a match um, so yes I love my my sunshine and blues family down there in Florida you've got you got two two musical lives going on here <laughs> yeah but they they kind of they kind of go tandem though they kind of work together but, and as luck would have it uh, th that's where you were when COVID-19 struck talk about that experience here you are like a thousand over a thousand miles from home and the world turns upside down yeah. And unfortunately, at that time, um, so I usually go to Florida like twice during the winter. If I'm lucky, I stay there all winter. But so usually I come home for a bit. And then so 2019 winter, I get down there. 2020, I come back for January. I go back to Florida. So I was only there for like a month, not even when COVID started. So, um, you know, like everybody else, uh, just kind of what to do, what to do. And I, I ended up coming home and that was the best choice uh, back here to Ohio. Cause I live, you know, I live here in Cleveland but I'm married to Mike Patron. So it was nice to, uh, to come back and be here with him during, you know, the shutdown. A well-known name around our parts here, <laughs> Mike Patron. He even played uh, for Around Noon's, our open air uh, concerts during the summer, a uh, piano guy. Um, now, but it's interesting, it's, it's a house of musicians, right? And musicians survive on gigs. What is <laughs> yes. it like to be in a dual uh, gig family where there are no gigs? Um, it, well, the first few months it was, you know, it was very sad. So we just, you know, we, we both found other things to dig into. For myself, it was the, the virtual technology, like mm. what you're seeing here with the video and the audio. Okay. So I just kind of went full steam ahead into that because I, I, need, I need something to focus on. So that's what I did. Um, Mike is working on his own thing. He, he wrote a musical over the last 10 years. So he started diving back into that. Um, but then Johnny's opened up, you know, when the, when the restaurants were able to open, uh, where he put, he plays, he's been there 28 years. Um, last week it was 28 years. So when they opened up, he was able to go back to work just as a piano player. Um, he wasn't allowed to sing for, you know, several months, but at least we had that going on. One of the rabbit holes you fell down, I understand, was Twitch. Talk talk about what Twitch is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, again, so, you know, during the, the shutdown, we all had to pivot in one direction or another. Uh, for me, I went virtual, and I found Twitch. Um, you know, the short story is it's a platform that was made for gamers mm -hmm. to watch other gamers, you know, for entertainment and to get better. They learn their tricks or whatnot. But then it turned out that it's a great platform for live music. So if you take the time to learn some of the technology, it's a super fun way to engage your audience really instantly. Um, 
and there's fun interactive things you do. So it makes it makes watching the music part like kind of a game for the audience. So I had a lot of fun with that. Maybe maybe you could score some gigs doing uh, uh, background music for a video game or something like that. You know, that's not a bad idea. I've, I've, I've heard some other people have done that. Yeah. <laughs> It, and, but also during the pandemic time, you uh, you got a chance to, to work on your vocals, I understand. Now, it's amazing. I'm sure people are listening to you right now singing, and they're saying, what, that that young lady, she's got the, 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 the voice of somebody who's been, you know, smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey for so many <laughs> years in those blues bars. But tell, tell us about working on your voice. Yeah, again, um, I, I'm one that likes to, to review and study and just kind of go to the woodshed, as they say, and... Uh, I've been blessed to um, make a great friend up in New York. Uh, his name's Kirk Yano. And over I'm the last... I know Kirk very well, yeah. Okay, for, for yeah. The local producer here, yeah. But with, Abs- with absolutely. With public enemy and all sorts of people. Yeah, so I was at a blues competition in uh, Memphis, Tennessee in 2019. Um, that's where I met him. He happened to be one of my judges uh, in the competition. And so we just, we hit it off because then we started talking. And long story short... It's, it's really because of him I, I, I really discovered how to dive in and make my voice better. Um, so definitely there in the pandemic, um, having the home studio and the microphone and the headphones really gave me a chance to dive into that specifically to try to make myself better. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's show off those vocal cords right now. Let's hear <laughs> what, What's your next song? This is, this is the brand new one. Tell us about it. Yeah, it is brand new. Um, it's so brand new. I... I have yet to play it for anybody. Wow. So this, this was the real debut here. Um, th- this one's called, uh, I don't even remember what it's called. What's it called? Don't Let Me Go. <laughs> don't Let Me Go. That's, that's what it's called. You go, girl. Uh, <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's hear it. You know what? I've got to change the tone of the guitar because I'm All still right. on the... Uh, that's fine. We're, yeah. we're wrapped live, watching it's, this. It's a live show, you know. Absolutely. There you go. So that's the other thing, that the, the technology for playing the cigar box, you need a little more gain. So i got to bump it back down to play this guitar. It's not the way that you love me. It's not the way that you care. It's just the way that you groove me, baby It thrills me beyond compare It's not the way that you kiss me That keeps me coming back It's just the way that you groove me, baby There's no turning back So when you move me, baby Move me slow And when you love me, baby Don't let me go When you move me, baby Move me slow And if you love me, baby Don't let me go Don't let me go I won't let 
let you go I'm gonna move you baby move you slow I'm gonna love you baby and I won't let you go I won't let you go Sweet sounds of Christine Jackson debuting her brand new song, Don't Let Me Go, for you on Applause Performances. Christine, we're getting some more love over the over the waves here. What a treasure, says Karen. Uh, Dave, uh, David recently uh, talked about uh, liking the, that cigar box uh, guitar as well. And then we've got a note from Pat Jackson. Ask Chrissy about the talents of her dad and granddad. You want to go <laughs> into that a little bit? Well, first I like to say hello, Grandma. <laughs> That'd be my grandma out there. Very cool. Yes, my uh, grandfather was an uh, organ player. Um, talk about hometown pride. I do believe he used to be the organist at the original Illyria Roll Arena when they used to wow. do the organ. Yeah, so Classic, he would play. The, right? Right? So he would play the organ in the corner while the skaters did their thing. And I, I believe him and my grandma were great uh, skater waltz, waltz skaters, wow. <laughs> if I remember correctly. So, yeah. And my dad um, also plays piano by ear. So he's, uh, I grew up with him playing the, you know, the upright piano in our living room um, as far back as I can remember. And uh, he, still, he still jams out once in a while. And uh, we call him Papa J on the keys. I imagine him and Mike have some conversations. It, you know, it was really fun uh, during Christmas. Um, this past Christmas, we did have my dad over for, for, for a little bit, and uh, they, they, they were trading Christmas carols. It was really fun. So That's here great. in the house, you know, it's be, fun before to be able we to. Say, oh, before ahead. we say goodbye today, uh, now that the pandemic seems to be on the wane in Ohio, what's, what's next for you? You know, I, I got some things cooking. Um, and, you know, some local shows that are exciting coming up. i uh, be at the Beachland Ballroom um, with Kirk Yano and uh, his artist Solomon Hicks from New York City um, coming up in July. Uh, tomorrow night I'm playing with Mike uh, downtown at Johnny's. Um, cool. And then again, you know, I'm hitting the road in September. Uh, and then I'll be down in Florida for a few months. Thank you so much for today. This was so much fun. We learned a little bit of music history of you. We learned a little bit about music history of the cigar box guitar. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing all this for us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Our guest has been Northeast Ohio's award-winning blues and Americana singer, Christine Jackson. Her social media handle is Music by KJ. For more on that and all the stuff you've been watching here today, visit arts.ideastream.org. And as mentioned earlier in our discussion, there are places locally that provide support for sexual assault, such as the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. Call the Crisis and Support Line at 216-619-6192, or you can go on the line to clevelandrapecrisiscenter.org. Christine, how about a little traveling music as we yeah. uh, edge, ease our way out of the program today? I got you. We thank our IdeaStream team, Jean-Marie Pepoy, Al Dalhausen, Joe Sheppa, Kevin Anderson, and Mike Vendelin. Carrie Wise is the managing producer of Arts and Culture. And this program that you've just been watching here and grooving on, Applause Performances, is produced by Dave DiOrio. Please join us next month, Friday, July 9th at noon, as we welcome a group of Tri-C Jazz Fest All-Stars, including, featuring, check this out, trumpeter Dominic Farinacci, guitarist Dan Wilson, drummer Jerome Jennings, and from NPR's Jazz Night in America, bass player Mr. Christian McBride. Again, that's Friday, July 9th, live at noon, right here on WCPN's Facebook page. I'm IdeaStream's David C. Barnett. See you back next month as we welcome live music, 
back in the studio, in our Idea Stream studios. It's been a long time, over a year for the first time. We had a great time today with Christine because you really got your, your studio tricked out there, and it was great having you today, Christine. And it's going to be fantastic next month. So we'll see you then. Christine, thanks again, and let's play out. <laughs>